Good morning, everyone. And again, I want to welcome you to the Pastor Don Weekly Devotion Weekly Podcast Show. Wow, that was an awesome clip. I sure hope you all enjoyed it. And again, I want to thank you for joining us and listening to my weekly devotional today, viewing it on Facebook or Google or YouTube, wherever, whatever site you see this on. It's always a pleasure for me to be able to bring to you each and every week a Bible teaching on this gorgeous day. And as also always, before I begin, I want to introduce my partner, but more than my partner, he's my brother in Christ, Donovan, and of course... Yeah. I want to thank him for everything he does in order to produce and edit my show. How are you doing today, Donovan? I'm, I'm, I'm alive. I'm thankful. <laughs> Obviously, she's doing rather good yeah, too, yeah, huh? She's doing good. She's oh, doing really good. So you're having a good week so yeah, far? so far. So, All right. right. Let, let me go ahead and get started. You know, for the fa- past few weeks, I've been doing a study on some of the wonderful parables that Jesus taught in the Gospels. Now, we've already looked at some of the kingdom parables of Matthew chapter 13, most notably the parable of the sower, the parable of the hidden treasure, and the pearl. Also looked at the parable of the net. Now in the last two weeks, we took a look at the parable of the unmerciful servant and the importance of forgiving others as God has graciously forgiven each of us in our sin. So this past week, I was looking at some of the other parables of Jesus, and I was praying and asking God, what would be the best story of Jesus to talk about, especially here in the 21st century? And the parable that got my attention is in Luke chapter 12, called the parable of the rich fool. And the reason why this parable got my attention was because when we look around this world, people are running around with their heads cut off living in the matrix of life, trying to make as much money as possible in order to buy as much stuff that they really don't need. And when you ask people when they'll be able to stop and relax and enjoy life, people will probably say, well, when I have enough money in my bank account or in my 401k or under my mattress or whatever you put your money at. And for many of us that day, just never comes. You see, society today puts all of our trust in money and assets and no trust in God and his word. So before I begin this message in this parable, let me get you focused on this topic by telling you a quick story. There was a king who had all this stuff that the world could afford. He had many, many, many possessions, lived his life to be even more rich and more powerful. However, the thing that he enjoyed doing more than anything else was laughing. But being a focused man on his wealth, he did not laugh at all for a long time. Now, there were many comedians and entertainers who tried to make this king laugh, but all of them just failed. One day, while being entertained by another jester, a Christian man came along asking for a chance to make this king laugh. The king said, why not? Now, this man had amazing God-given talents to make unusual faces. He did many funny things with his body, and he had an amazingly great wit. When he performed for the king, he put on his best comical show that he'd ever done, and the king never laughed so hard. This Christian man credited God for his talent. So once the activity was over, the king wanted to hire this Christian man to be his personal jester. And of course, the Christian man said yes. So once hired, the king jokingly handed him a small stick and said to him, laughing his heart out, You are the most foolish man alive. When you find someone more foolish than you, then you need to give him this stick. And the king just kept on laughing with this man. After many years had passed, the king finally was on his last days. He was laying sick on his deathbed, ready to die at any moment. So he called for this Christian jester, for he wanted to laugh just one more time before he passed away. When the jester was through with his performance, the man asked to speak to the king personally. Once this Christian man was alone with the king, he said, King, where are you going when you die? The king responded, on a far journey. The jester asked again, and how do you plan on getting there? Again, the king responded, I don't know. I do know I have accomplished many things and I have many possessions. Then the jester pulled out that same small stick from his back pocket and handed it to the king. The king was stunned and asked, why was he giving him the stick? 
The Christian jester replied, King, today I have found a more foolish man than me. For you see, I only laugh with my God-given talents, because my home is in heaven. But you have trifled with all the things of this world, and you have cared less about eternity. It is obvious to me who the biggest fool is. You know, the parable that I'm going to be looking at this morning is entitled, The Parable of the Rich Fool. And it can be found in Luke 12, verses 16 to 21. Let me read it for you today. Jesus told this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my sur surplus of grain. And I'll say to myself, you now have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared only for yourself? Verse 21. This is how it will be when anyone who ever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God in heaven. Normally, we take a look at these parables of Jesus, and when we want to figure out what the characters and the symbols mean. But in this parable, there is no symbols. I mean, the man, he symbolizes you and me in our lives. The crops, well, there are material things that was earned through our own efforts. And the moral of the story is that we must not store things for ourselves and live only for our own pleasure, but use our blessings to help others. The reason is every day is a gift from God, and He is the only one who knows how many days we have left on this earth. So if you think about it, this parable is pretty quite simple and very straightforward. Don't you agree? Absolutely. But there is so much more to learn in this parable. Let me give you a couple ideas to ponder. In the verses prior to this parable, Jesus is in the middle of a teaching about putting our priorities onto the things of God and not of ourselves. Then all of a sudden, Jesus is interrupted by a man who is whining over what he considers an unfair division of his father's estates between his brother and himself. Let me read to you the couple verses prior to the parable in Luke 12, starting in verse 13. It goes like this, somewhere in the crowd, someone, excuse me, in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you. Then Jesus said to him, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now, when, what you may have noticed from what the man in the crowd does is that he doesn't ask Jesus for his opinion or his advice. He literally commands Jesus to tell his brother to divide the inheritance fairly. Now, I want to tell you something, folks. It's probably never a good idea to tell Jesus what to do. I mean, <laughs> right. If you do that you probably will not like the results. You know why I bring this up, Donovan, is because a lot of us get into a bad habit of telling Jesus what to do in our prayers. Right. Jesus, I need, need this. It. Jesus, want. you need me to do this. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I need you to do this for me today. And I think about that, I'm thinking, wow, I'm not sure that's the best strategy in regards to our prayer life. Because the whole idea is, is Jesus is caring more about your heart and not as much caring about what you think mm -hmm. that you need. We don't need a genie in the bobble when it comes to our prayers. We need a, a God who's going to transform our hearts for him. So you notice in Jesus' answer to that brother, he doesn't give him a legal answer. He gives him a moral answer. And the reason for that is because the root problem with that brother was greed and not the inheritance. It was more of a heart's problem and not a contractual issue. It was the sin of the 10th commandment. And we all know what that sin is. 
covetedness. Coveting is lusting to have more than our fair share and never being satisfied with the blessings from God. It is the striving to gain more and more stuff when we already have more than we need. This is the idea of people working all the time, making extra dollars and realizing what they're doing in hurting their minds and bodies. And let me tell you this, folks. People in the United States truly struggle mightily with the sin of greed and covetousness. How do I know? Because we in the United States live better than billions of people around the world and don't even know it. And we're not even appreciative of what God has already provided. So this leads me to the idea of greed. Greed is a very dangerous thing. It is not being grateful for the things that God has blessed us with. It is always wanting more and more and never being content with the <laughs> blessings of life. Now, God calls this man in this parable a fool. So here's the question I have for you, and Donovan. What is a fool in the eyes of God? Well, here's what a fool is in the Bible. It is someone who has the knowledge or intelligence to know what is right, but is still doing what is wrong. It is literally the opposite of wisdom. So how do we know what's right in the eyes of God? Well, the Bible shows us in Proverbs 21, verse 26, it teaches us all day long he craves for more, but the righteous gives without sparing. And then Ecclesiastes 5.10 says this, Whoever loves money will never have enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. So our goal is that we don't want to be fools in the eyes of God. So what are some of the things that you and I can do and learn from this parable of the rich fool? I think there are five extremely important lessons that we can take in order not to suffer from the sins of greed and covetousness. And for the upcoming two weeks, I will be taking a closer look at this parable and giving you some valuable lessons from Jesus. There are a lot of pearls of wisdom in this parable, so you're not going to want to miss these next upcoming two podcasts. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this parable of the rich fool. Lord, none of us want to be labeled as a fool by you. But your word is clear on the dangers of coveting and greed and living our lives only for ourselves. Lord, if anyone that is listening or watching this podcast struggles with these sins, help us, Lord, to be more selfless in our ways of handling your blessings to us. Lord, we thank you for everything you have given us. We honor and praise you and give you glory in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope and pray that you enjoyed this devotional today. Please make sure that you join us in the next couple of weeks as we continue to look at the insightful parable of this rich fool. Also, I want to continue to remind you to please read my daily devotionals on my Reflections Ministries Facebook page and sharing our page with all your family and friends. I'm asking you to please like and follow the Reflections Ministry page because I know you'll enjoy the content on it. And of course, everything I do is on my app, Reflections Christian Church. So please download this podcast, share it with all your family and friends, and if they don't have the app, they can get it on Google Play or the Apple Store. It's called Reflections Christian Church. So please download it and share it with all your family and friends. Folks, again, I hope you're enjoying these daily devotionals and these podcasts. As I've said many times, my goal is to give you and your family a taste of Jesus every day to lift us up in Him. And again, I appreciate everything you do in liking it and sharing it and following it on Facebook. You have no idea when you share that one thing, the positive effect that you may be having to a person listening to the podcast or reading the devotionals. So thank you again, and God bless you and your family. Man, that, that's a, uh, I would say, a, a long overdue parable and uh, teaching because it is so true that, you know, we always talk about the matrix. Mm -hmm. And I, I talk about that in my other show. 
uh, all the time. People say, what do you mean when you say the matrix, the matrix, the matrix? Well, the matrix is, and I try to, it's just like the movie. Remember that part in the movie where they, uh, Neo or uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus, was saying, what if I told you that the world isn't what you think it is? And I, I use that as the matrix for myself because... If you listen to the Bible and read the Bible, this is not how the world is supposed to be. That's right. And that goes to show you you're in a temporary mm-hmm. holding thing. And if you know what the matrix is and what it is, you're not striving to live here. Exactly. The idea of the matrix is working and working and working and killing yourself physically and mm-hmm. mentally Spiritually. to get more and more and more stuff like this rich fool just in order to have more possessions not realizing that every day is a gift from God. And if you died, what do you do? You give it to your children. You give it to the, Really? You killed yourself for that instead of giving more glory to God by giving what your excess is to those in need. And that's the whole idea of the matrix. Working is putting your priorities in the materialism of life and not putting your priorities in the things of God. Right. Um, because uh, here's, here's, here's my analogy of the matrix and what, what you just talked about the parable. Um, I realized somewhere along the line that all the wealth that I can have, a billion dollars, I couldn't spend that. If you gave me $100,000, I couldn't spend that in a lifetime, okay? Um, well, yeah, I guess if I was buying a house. I was going to say, yeah, yeah depends on what you invest in, yeah. yeah. But but the point is, I can't take it with me at the end of the day because this this little billion dollars is nothing to what God has in store. It's like, exactly right. I mean, we put so much value in the things of this earth, not realizing that the value is in eternity, the right. value is in heaven, the value is being with Jesus. But see, we are so visual type people that we only think what's valuable is what we can see here, not realizing that the faith that we have on uh, in, in going forward with God is just is priceless in comparison to anything that this world has to offer. But we don't see it, and that's the problem. Right, and you know... Um this whole thing, it just it just comes together for me because when I, I used to read those uh, parables and Jesus would say, it's easier for a, uh, a rich man to go through the eye of a, a needle than it, or a camel. To be- you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Donovan, because a lot of people then have asked me the, the same old question. Well, does that mean a rich man can never get to heaven? No, he can get to heaven. Are you serious? Of course. <laughs> Look at Abraham. Yeah. Abraham was probably considered one of the richest men in the world. Right. And I guarantee you, he's at the, the top of the list right. of heaven. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with your possessions. It has nothing to do with wealth. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do. I mean, I, I'll bring up a great example. Um, uh, someone that a lot of Christian folks know is uh, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Tim Depot has a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this. He is really very, he's wealthy. And, and there's other uh, Christian uh, athletes uh, mm-hmm. that are in that same thing. Drew Brees from the New Orleans Saints. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of money. They have huge contracts. But guess what? They're going to heaven. You know why? Because they understand that that money is just a tool, a tool. to be able to give back. I can't tell you how many foundations, charity organizations, churches that Tim Tebow and Drew Brees is a part of that they give back their monies to those in need more than they actually take in. So they live on a smaller percentage mm-hmm. of the monies that they've earned because they get it. They understand that it's all about being selfless and not right. selfish. It's like having money with an open hand versus a closed fist. Mm-hmm. And these guys get it. So are these guys going to absolutely because they get it. They understand what money is, which is a tool to help others, especially with the excess that they have. So, yeah. yes, if you're rich, oh, my gosh. You definitely will be going to heaven as long as you recognize, first of all, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And then secondly, Mm -hmm. you realize that money and possessions are a tool Mm -hmm. to be used for the glory of God. And don't get me wrong. I try to tell people, um, you got to, you know, pay Caesar his tithes. You got to pay your bills. You got to work. I worked for 24 years in the military. I put in my time. I looked at what I have and I said, you know what? I'm 42 years old when I retired. That's enough. Yeah. Now I'm going to go ahead and relax and get ready and... It just, uh, for me, it opened my eyes because I said, this is all I need to live. Mm -hmm. My kids are grown. I've done everything I can as a parent. Uh, I've been blessed. Exactly. Well, see, you made the decision to to, to use the time that God gives you to give him glory. Now, I know a lot of folks know Donovan as, you know, being a little outspoken in regard to (laughs) politics and Moreno Valley uh, issues and all that. And that's fine. That's, that's, you know, that's where his passion is in regard to that. 
What you guys don't realize is that this is not a fake man here just doing this for his own image. He truly believes in the things that we talk about on this show. So he's literally using his time, his abilities, mm -hmm. his expertise, and he's using it all to give back to the Lord through this podcast, what he does in regards to the videos, the, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, postings and all that. He's doing that because he recognizes the importance of giving back to God. So, yeah, he's made that choice. I've made the choice. I've also worked for 30 years of my life, right. and I made the choice that this is what I want to do going forward is to give back to the Lord through evangelism. Right, but, you know, uh, that, that epiphany of how much do I need to live, yeah. and I see all my friends chasing money, chasing money, and they're just so miserable. Their health is failing. I mean, but yet even though their health is failing – they're still chasing the money. Oh my it's gosh. like all you, when the doctor's telling you, you know, you need to get away from that, the stress or what. No, they, I, I gotta get this. I gotta, I gotta take care of my grandkids. I, don't get me wrong. If, when, when the day comes I have grandkids, I'll do what I can. Sure. But I, I live within my means. Exactly. You know, and you might be thinking, well, I'll just pause because you're not having any fun. This man just came back from China, China for a couple of weeks, and he's going to yeah. go next year. Yeah. He's yeah. traveling a lot. He goes to the, he goes to New Orleans. He goes to a lot yeah. of places. I've been to Hawaii two, three times. I'm going to yeah. go back to mm -hmm. Hawaii this year. We are enjoying life Hawaii. because God blesses. He's continuously blessing. He blesses us more than we can handle because we've chosen to do it right and put Him first. Versus putting the matrix of the world first. And, you know, and the thing is you bring that up, and, and I know this kind of – you're a, a pastor, whereas I'm just an average person. But um, – You're not an average well, person. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean I don't have the a spiritual uh, clause. Yeah. But the, the way I look at it in my interpretation of the Bible, my interpretation of the Bible is this God is so powerful. He has angels that do nothing but worship him 24 hours a day, seven days. I mean, jealous God. This guy has no clarity about who he is. Mm -hmm. And – when, when, when the day comes and judgment day comes and he says, hey, Donovan, I want you to be a janitor and that's what you're going to do for eternity. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm OK with it. Right. So in the meantime, while I'm on the earth, I'm going to, you know, enjoy this great earth that he's created. Look at the different cultures and and just enjoy it, because when it is over, I'll be praising the Lord for the rest of my events. and I'm going to tell you this if, if the, the job that God has for Donovan is to, is to be a custodian <laughs> it will have, bring him more joy right. than anything we can do right. here on right. this earth because what God's got planned for us no eyes see no ears are what God has planned that's what Paul says in Corinthians we don't have a clue, but we know it's going to be awesome. So whatever, God can have me cleaning toilets. Right. I will have nothing but right. joy just in being in the presence of the Lord. So right. I right. see it the same way. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I, so everybody interprets the Bible differently. I don't believe there's going to be mansions in heaven. I don't believe there's going to be cars in heaven. Because uh, you don't need that because you're an angel. <laughs> so why would I need a car? I have wings. I think God's got an amazing plan. You know, when, yeah, when just, you just talk, thinking of it. When you're talking about John 14, 2 and 3, and goes, I, I, I'm preparing a room for you. Yes. I think what God's saying there is God is preparing an amazing, amazing heaven for us. For those that put their faith in Christ for the forgiveness of sins, I think you know mansions. I'm not here measuring my mansion here, right. but I do. I do realize that God's got an amazing plan for me personally, my family personally, for Donovan personally, in regards to what His plans are, and I know it's going to be awesome. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But um, I, I think that this parable that you're saying has so many uh, applications to how people are living, and if people would just stop and take a moment mm -hmm. and say, well. You know, I, I, I have a lot of military friends and stuff, and you, know, you see what's going on in the world. And I know it's really rough out there for people. But they're saying, oh, my God, I, I got to do this. And they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're getting the money. Some people are blessed. They have really, really good money, but they're miserable. Mm -hmm. and, 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 do you, and, and, and do you know why they're miserable? At least what I've noticed, but you can't tell them that. I would say that they're miserable but because they don't have a lot of joy and peace in their life. True they, joy and peace in the life of the Lord. The Lord in their life because right. guess what? They are so busy in the matrix. That's they right. don't have time to go to church. They That's don't right. have time to get the word. That's right. Which is why we do it. Or they don't think they need it. They have all this stuff. What do I need yes. God for? Thank no, you. God, I don't need you. I've already got enough money to live on. What do I need you for? Mm -hmm. And that's where the miserable comes up because even Solomon. The richest man in the world at that time mm -hmm. realized when he finally realized in the book of Ecclesiastes how meaningless all of this is. I quoted yes. from Ecclesiastes 5.10. It is meaningless to go after these things in life when basically, you know, you're, you're going to die one day or raptured before. 
and it's all going to be left behind. And what's what did you kill yourself for when you could have had that peace and joy from mm-hmm. God living for Him? Right, peace of mind, peace mm-hmm. of mind. It just uh, doesn't make sense to me, but uh, you know, and, and some people have a different opinion sure. about, about about what we're saying. But uh, let, let me ask you this, and it's a, it's just a question I want to throw out there because somebody asked me that a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to bring it to you. When we die. Uh, do we turn into angels automatically? No, we do not turn into angels. When we die, uh, absence from the body, presence with the Lord is very clear in the in in the um, in the epistle letters that was written by Paul, uh, and then in, in in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter nine, it talks about uh, for once we die once and receive, and then we receive, when we then we we receive judgment. So basically, when we die. Our soul and spirit goes and bees to bees with the Lord. That's where we go immediately, absent from the body, present with the Lord. We, the, God sees angels as ministering spirits. Mm-hmm. And you're right about what angels do. Angels basically are worshiping God. Mm-hmm. But they're also utilized by God to do work. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm still a firm believer, Donovan, that each of us has a guardian angel. Mm-hmm. Angel that God uses in order to be able to help us in times of need. But see, we are above. We will actually. The Bible teaches that we're going to be judging the angels. So our our position in God's eyes is even above the wow. angels. So we have a position with God that's you know you know that is that is you know quite worthy uh, of being able to be uh, of doing those judgments against angels. So I say, when we die, we are with the Lord. We are cognizant with the Lord. If you want to understand how it looks like, you can go back and read Luke sixteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, starting, I think in verse nine, talks about the um, you know the the rich man and 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 the beggar that dies that they were actually able to talk, they would be able to see, mm-hmm. they would be able to minister. That's how I see it's going to be. Now, at the rapture, we're going to get our glorious body that we will have forever. Mm-hmm. But if uh, someone we know that was in Christ that gave their life to the Lord, if they have already died, they are with God today. Today, now they don't have their glorious body yet. That doesn't right. happen until, until the rap day. until the rapture. Right. The rapture comes, but today, your loved ones who have passed away in Christ are with the Lord. Okay, today. so so let me ask you this: Just do this. Uh, so let's say, example, Adolf Hitler is he with Christ today? Okay, Adolf Hitler. See, here's the one thing you need to understand: Adolf Hitler is probably the most evil man that's walked this earth. Do I know that if he's in heaven or not? The answer is no. Mm-hmm. There's only one that can judge, and that's God. Mm-hmm. We are not here to judge. He could on his when he I think did he kill himself. Uh, so they say. So they say. I don't know what <laughs> what he did. So they say. But right before he killed himself, he could have said, I, "Lord, I, I surrender to you. I give my life, to Jesus Christ, my Lord." And he could be in heaven. <laughs> I don't know. But if he did not. Then he is definitely he's in hell, yeah. absent from the body, present with the Lord. But it also goes the opposite direction: absent from the body, separation from the Lord. If you never gave your life to so, Jesus Christ, so uh, and, and 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 that's where my confusion is. And a lot of people that ask me, uh, are we judged immediately? Because my understanding yes. as a Catholic is the fact that um, it's like when Jesus uh, rose Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, yeah, Lazarus mm-hmm. from the dead. Uh, Lazarus didn't say, oh my God, what'd you do? I was in heaven and I was enjoying everything with my virgins or whatever. <laughs> he didn't say that. He just woke up and that's how it was. And my understanding of the Bible is nobody is judged till judgment day. Uh, when you when you died, it's like sleeping and he's going to wake you. Mm-hmm. So my understanding all these years uh, is that my father, my real father, my earthly father, has... Uh, has passed and he is awaiting judgment day like everybody else that's passed before him. Well, the one thing about, and I'm trying to find the verse here while we're, um, while I'm talking, um, I can't find it right off the top, but I will here in a second. This whole idea, what the Catholics believe, and I was a Catholic for many, many years, is that they do believe in this issue called purgatory, uh, which basically is like an area that you're not literally condemned, but you're not literally saved. Well, we're just going to torture you for a while. Exactly. In my understanding of the Bible, uh, there is no teaching that I have ever seen that talks about purgatory. There's no such place mm-hmm. because it goes back to Hebrews 9, I think it was Hebrews 9, 27, if I could find it here real mm-hmm. quickly. It's, it says here in Hebrews 9, 27, the NIV, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Mm-hmm. After that, if you look on the Greek, says immediately after that you face judgment. And what is that judgment? The judgment is either a positive judgment, be with the Lord, or the negative. judgment is a negative judgment, separation mm-hmm. from the Lord. Mm-hmm. So the idea of purgatory just doesn't exist right. because the judgment is immediate by God. So 
Um, so the Catholics do believe a little bit of that. You know, I know they like candles and stuff like that, and yeah. I know that's their part of their religion. Well, all we got to do is say twelve Hail Marys, and we're, and we're exactly. In. We're well, in. <laughs> and again, with all due respect to all my Catholic friends yes. out there, we're in. I, I just don't see that biblically because Hebrews nine twenty seven makes it seem immediately yeah. comes judgment. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, taken from this parable that you read today, uh, what advice would you give somebody who is in the matrix because you, you can't help but be in it? It's okay to be, and I tell people, it's okay to be in the matrix, but you got to understand that this isn't God's plan. Yeah, that's a great question, you know, because a lot of people listening says, hey, I'm already caught in the maze. You know, the matrix is, is the same idea of looking at it being a, ma- a, a mouse in a maze, mm-hmm. you know, continue running around with your head cut off, literally getting nowhere. Mm-hmm. And it's the same idea. And a lot of people have asked me, well, I'm already in the matrix. What do I do now? How do I get out of it? And that's, that's awesome. It's a great question. It took you time to get in. It's, it's going to take you time, time to, to get, get out of it. But the first step, the first step to getting out of the matrix is, is, is to get, is start giving your days to the Lord. It's starting with prayer. It's starting by thanking God for the day, thanking God for what he has given you, thanking God for the blessings. And then it's allowing God to lead your life. In other words, you're praying for complete surrender of each day to the Lord. In other words, it's not about you anymore. See, a lot of people think, well, gosh, man, you know, you know, I prayed and prayed and prayed and I lost my job. What good did praying to God do for me? I lost my job. I'm going to do. I always look at it like this. If God was God, if God was part of the process of losing your job, that tells me that God's got a better job for you job tomorrow. For you. Exactly. A lot better job. And it happened to me. I thought the worst thing that could ever happen to me <laughs> is lose my business. I thought that, that was the world was coming to an end. Right. And that actually was the greatest thing that could have happened in my life because it got me into the Lord and it got me into uh, um, planting churches. So sometimes what we see right. as a negative is God sees it as a, the next step in, the, in maturing in Him. And sometimes we just got to trust Him. So don't, to get out of the matrix, you got to put your priorities on God first. Matthew 6.33 talks mm-hmm. about seek God first. Always put God at the centerpiece of your life versus only going to God when things aren't going well or things aren't going right or you're having problems. Then you, you've tried all your options. You did your, your, your first choice, your second choice, third choice. Nothing's worked. Oh, now I'll go check, check with God yes, and yeah. see what God does yeah. type thing. It's all the opposite. If you want to get out of the matrix, then seek God first each and every day and then allow God to lead you. And he may lead you out of that job. He may lead you out of that home you're in to lead you to a better home. He may lead you in a different direction that you're not expecting. But if you trust him, he will lead you down a path of joy and hope that you'll never experience without him. See, and, and, and that's a good point you bring up because you know, every time you talk, and it, it pops something in my head. It seems like every person that Jesus and God used to spread his message or to do his work, they were opposed to it. Moses was opposed to oh, it. Oh, yeah. David was opposed to it. Yeah. The initial reaction normally is negative. Matter of fact, I think the majority of them were. I think there's only two men that God used in the Old Testament that was not opposed from the beginning, oh, and that's Daniel mm-hmm. and Joseph. Right. But besides that, you're right about Abraham. Yeah. He didn't trust God. Yeah, he, like, hey, he called his wife his sister because he was afraid right. of losing his life. And, of course, you mentioned David. He, I mean, he's got sins a mile long yeah. among others. And, and, and Moses, he argued with God. Yeah. And, God like, not not doing, <laughs> not and then me. the most famous guy who argued the most was Jonah, who actually went the opposite direction of God. So, yeah, a lot of people don't are, are in that same boat that they don't so initially trust. Exactly. Yeah, we're in good company. They don't initially trust God. But when they did, look what happened. Look what happened with David. Look what happened with Jonah. Look what happened with uh, all the Abraham, all Moses. I mean, Their lives was completely transformed because of God in a way that's just and protected. miraculous and protected. And exactly. Protected. So, yeah, if you're in that position that you're kind of in the middle, you want to trust God, but you don't know how, the first step is to pray. Pray that God gives you strength. Pray that God gives you wisdom. Pray that God gives you the uh, the direction to go towards Him versus towards the matrix of the world. And then let God be God. Let be God be the center of your life and see what He let does. God lead you. Like I said, He may lead you in a totally different direction, and that's okay. Or He may lead you down the same path, but with a different perspective, and that's okay too. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, as, as we uh, come to a, a close this week, I just want to uh, bring up the fact that uh, we're going to be. Uh, I talked to Mr. Well, I haven't talked. I sent an email to Mr. Sansemeyer, waiting for the number to uh, 
get that awesome. Going. Yeah, the, so. the the plan for that is still the same. Uh, I, I I talked to the uh, developer. And unfortunately, the delays are out towards around the first or middle of November to get the uh, to through planning commission and hopefully through the uh, city council. And then once that's approved, then we go ahead and start the uh, renovation of the clubhouse immediately. So we're still looking at a, a church plant, a potential church plant getting pre-launched by around the end of the first quarter, second quarter of uh, 2018. So we're just praying, first of all, and that's what I'm asking all my audience, is to please pray that the uh, the plans... For the golf course and for the apartment facilities, they get approved through planning and the commission and through city council in a timely manner, and then we can go forward and uh, and plant this church out in um, Rancho Bolago. One thing I want to say before we run out is that um, I'm really excited about this, Don. And you know, it's funny, Don doesn't even know about this, but... um, (laughs) We are totally revamping our Facebook page. We first started with a Facebook Facebook page, calling it Reflections uh, Reflections Marina Valley Church. Oh, I do know about it because I've been trying to yeah monitoring. So then we revamped that from that to Reflections Church, and and then finally we are revamping it one more time to call it Reflections mm-hmm. Ministries. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to become a global ministry. We are going to completely change our page. It's going to be, it's going to be an amazing transformation of videos. We're going to have, uh, we're going to be doing some videos today with Donovan. We are going to do some loops. We are going to make that a full evangelistic page. A full evangelistic page in regards to reflections ministry. So what I'm asking you to do. We all start seeing all these changes by the end of this month. So I'm asking you to please go to Reflections Ministry page. We already have our daily devotionals there. We have our weekly podcast there. We have a lot of different uh, uh, sayings, inspirational memes. We've got videos, a lot of awesome things there on that page. But it's actually going to get better and better and it's going to get more... um, God's not more God centered, but more inspirational to build you up in Christ. So get excited with me on Reflections Ministry Facebook page and be a follower of it. Share it with your family and friends because I know that they'll enjoy it. Yes. Um, you know, and that and that's a great thing. Yeah, I did notice that on the page that I was going mm-hmm. there. I said there's something changing on the page. But um what we're doing, um, I got a lot of great feedback and um we were doing this video and got a lot of great feedback on last week's podcast. Because, it was excellent. Because if everybody noticed at the end of the podcast, well, at the beginning of this podcast, you're going to see a video in, in regards to what Pastor Don is doing. And the reason why we're doing that is people saying, well, you know, why are you doing all this other stuff? And it, it makes the, the podcast listener, you can't see it, but go to the Facebook page and you can see the videos. Um, like, like we said last week, we were trying to reach as many people as we can because sometimes you can talk to somebody and they don't understand like me I'm a very technical person so I talk in a technical aspect you have to get it down to where everybody can understand it so uh, we started adding these videos as well to emphasize what Pastor Don is saying in Mm -hmm. case you don't get it from the from the aspect of you know how to visualize what he's talking about and last week we we put a video of the uh, what was the name of the 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 unmerciful servant the unmerciful servant right at the end of the right at the end of the video Mm -hmm. and it was a very I mean I thought it was a very telling video that's why I put it in there because it was like it was Cut great. and dry, mm-hmm. exactly the the parable you were talking about, and it it, it pretty much sent home the message. Absolutely, it, it was it was so appropriate and it was well done. And I know a lot of people really really enjoyed it. I know I got a lot, I even got feedback in regard to the Ten Commandments one you did the <laughs> yeah, previous the week. Yeah. So we do this for the purpose of helping you to really understand what these parables are all about. It just gives you a little another avenue of understanding to be able to maybe, you know, really grasp it and then be able to utilize it. Right. And we want you to take those videos and like and share them and oh gosh, uh, sp- yes. and spread that as much as you can. I mean, that's why we're doing them because we are out here to uh with good souls? Is that what we're trying to do? Oh my gosh. What we're trying to do is evangelize the message of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know what? I'm a firm believer, folks. I've told this to Donovan many times. We are living in the end times. We're living in the end days. This is a time of revival. This is a time to just, for all Christians, to get out there and literally, you have the power within you to spread the name of Jesus everywhere. And this tool of the Reflections Ministries Facebook page, the podcast. These are just tools, tools. for you to use to share that message to all your family and friends. Right. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, sometimes I'll be, I have a smart TVs in my house. If you don't have a smart TV, you can make one, Roku stick or a fire stick, however you want to do it. But I'll be mm-hmm. sitting in my, um, 
bed, you know, just late at night, and I'll be on YouTube and or you know Google Plus, whatever platform you use, and I will look at the videos. You know, of course, you want to see the work that you've done. Of course, you want to do that and <laughs> yeah. crit- and critique yourself. Oh, uh, good. But the good thing is sometimes I'm laying there and I'll like be talking to my mom in Louisiana or somebody and I'll say, hey, go to YouTube and look at this thing and let me tell you, tell me what you think. And sometimes I do that just so I can get them to listen to the message. Absolutely. Because I can really care less about your critique. Because <laughs> like, uh, you know it's already good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just say, hey, I, I know it's good. But yeah. um, just get the message. But uh, I like sitting there and, you know, getting that thing out because I, and I'm looking at the, you know, likes and the shares and the YouTube part and I see that it's going out to a lot of people, more so than what I thought it was going to go out to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm thankful for that. But at the same time, I look at it and I say, that's what this is about. It's not about seeing Pastor Don. And again, remember, what you're actually seeing is a podcast. We don't really, we're just putting the video out so you can see us interacting Mm -hmm. outside of the pocket. But you see these mics in front of us. We're actually doing a radio show, right. so and we just put the videos up to emphasize it. So we want you guys to know that we're trying to go out there and spread that word and, and, and hit it as hard as we can. And it's working, folks. It's yeah. working. The numbers are incredible. God incredible. is blessing the incredible. ministry. You are sharing it with others. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. And you know what? We love your comments. So if you're, you know, send us a note. Send us what you think. Right. If there's any questions, Donovan gets questions every once in a while to ask Pastor Don. Please, I, I enjoy yeah. that. We don't rehearse before. No, everything is live. <laughs> everything just... is live. So I have no idea what questions you may ask, but that's what I love about this show mm-hmm. is that it's 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 just wide open and free, and we're here basically to build you up in Christ. Right. That's the best way. And to like do. you said, you, you see my cat walking around. I mean, this is live. We're just and you yeah. know I don't care if the cat's in the video because this, these are behind the scenes shots of what you're seeing. But as, as we close, Pastor Don. All I want to do is, again, thank you all for listening or watching. I hope you've been blessed. I just want to close out in prayer. And uh, let's do it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we've had together, Lord. And thank you so much for allowing Donovan and I this platform in order to uh, bring the uh, the words of, uh, of your word, Lord, in this parable of the rich fool. Lord, none of us wants to be known as a fool in your eyes. So, Lord, let us uh, recognize the uh, importance of putting you first in all things, living by the, the words of Matthew 6.33, and allowing you to be the centerpiece of our lives and not allow the world and its matrix to drive our lives. Lord, we honor you with everything we do, Lord. We want to live for you as a reflection of Christ, the light of you in this dark world. We love you, Lord, and give you praise and glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next week.